G'day, welcome to another curriculum burst. Here's a curious question for high schoolers. It goes as follows. Let x be chosen at random from the interval 0 to 1. Okay. What is the probability that square bracket log base 10 of 4x minus square bracket log base 10 of x equals 0? Hmm. Here, square bracket of something, square bracket of x, denotes the greatest integer that is less than or equal, or equal to x. So, all right, let's see. So 3.1, the square bracket of 3.1 would be the largest integer less than or equal to 3.1. That'll be 3. Okay, so just round it down to the nearest integer. All right, so we're looking for, choose the number of x between 0 and 1, and ask what's the probability that if I round down log base 10 of 4x, can I just write log of at 4x? minus log of x equals 0. Well, the moles will be equal to each other. Maybe that's better. So I want to know what's the chances if I choose something between 0 and 1 that this is true. Round down log of 4x, round down log of x, and you get the same integer. All right. Um, what am I going to do? What am I going to do here? Um, well, since I'm rounding down, uh, well, what am I doing? Actually, I can't help but think 4x. Can I just rewrite this as log of x plus log of 4 has to equal log of x? That seems natural to do. Because now I've got log of x's, and everything's going to be rounded down. So maybe I should think about what log of x is doing. I mean, log of x, at least here, gets rounded down to its nearest integer. So if I write log of x as some integer plus some fractional bit, something between 0 and 1, then rounding log x down to the nearest integer will just give me n. So this is saying... Whatever log of x is, I want the expression log of, oops, sorry, log of x is n plus epsilon plus log of 4. When that gets rounded down, I get uh, n plus epsilon rounded down. I just get n. So the question is, what are the chances of that being true? If x is between 0 and 1. OK, x is between 0 and 1. Um, round down n plus a little something and get to n. So that means, oh, this little something, epsilon plus 4, has to be smaller than 1. If it's bigger than 1, then the next integer we round down to would be n plus 1, not n. So we're really asking what are the chances that epsilon plus log of 4 are less than 1, or epsilon is less than 1 minus log of 4. OK. All right, so I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. I've just, I've just been like pacing my way through this, just, just trying to get somewhere. But we choose a number x between 0 and 1, whose log hopefully has epsilon satisfying it being smaller than 1 minus log of 4. That seems crazy. How can I make sense of that? Um, well, let's see. I said that epsilon is actually between 0 and 1. So I can actually say it's between 0 and 1, and, and 1 minus log of 4. Oh, oh, OK. I've got epsilon. Maybe I should make this a statement about x again. Let's unravel this all about x's. I mean, I've got, if I add n to everything, that's really going to be about log of x. So n is less than or equal to n plus epsilon log of x is less than uh, n plus 1 minus log of 4 uh, log of x. That's really awkward. Um, let's raise it into the 10th power. 10 to the n, 10 to the log x, 10 to all that. So that tells me, oh gosh, uh, let me change colors. I want. 10 to the n to be less than x to be less than 10 to the n times 10 to the 1. That's 10 times 10 to the negative log of 4. 10 to the uh, 1 over 10 to the log of 4, 1 over 4. So it's 10 over 4. 10 over 4, 5 over 2. Ah, that means I want to have x in the interval 0 to 1 being between some power of 10 and 5 halves times that power of 10. X is between 0 and 1. So like I can't have n equals 2. I can't be talking about 100 and 5 halves times 100. Uh, I must be talking about like negative numbers. Uh, in fact, I must be talking about negative numbers. Uh, 10 to the negative 1. Oh. So I need 1 tenth less than x less than 5 halves 1 tenth. Or I need uh, negative 2. 1 one hundredth is less than x is less than 5 halves 1 one hundredth. And so on. These give me little ranges that I want x to land in between the interval 0 to 1. That feels like something I can handle. I mean, I was just like uh, rambling my way through this, just persevering through whatever the equations are telling me. I guess that's strategy number 7. Perseverance is key. But now I've got a whole series of ranges that I want x to land in when it's chosen at random between 0 and 1. So now what I've got to do is figure out what's the chances that x is going to land in one of those ranges. That feels a little more doable. I know how long each of these intervals is. 
then maybe I could add up all those links and get an actual number, get an actual answer to this question. That would be cool. So I'm going to invite you to finish off this problem. I'll finish it off too. I'll write an essay to go with this video. And let's compare results. Have a look at the essay and see if we both get to the same place in the end. It's kind of cool. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.